So can you show me something? Can you teach me something? What would you like to know? I need to I need something quite easy. Okay. <laughs> um, well, that's all that's all my songs, so you're in luck. <laughs> um you know what? It's a really easy Black Star Rider song, which is called Finest Star. I don't know if you know that one. I'm gonna take this ear piece. So it's all simple. It's just we got a G, we got a D. Hear this? Okay, I'm gonna put my. Oh gosh. An E minor. E minor is E minor, E minor. You got it. E and that's really the vert. What's E minor again? It's just so, the two. It's the it's the um the the fifth string on the second fret, right? And the fourth okay. string on the second fret. Yeah. So you're playing an E and you're taking off your your index yeah. finger. Mm -hmm. There you go. So I, I mean, it's simple. And then, you know, so it's like. <laughs> so, I mean, I'd be playing that, and that's the basis of the song. I mean, it's so simple. You know? Time turns another page and a million years go passing by. Broken heart strings and guitar strings. Three chords. You and me all down the line. And there's a little lead bit that I think it's just them. Yeah. Just follows the melody. So, the, you know, the guitar is going. So, you know, just a G. And I'm playing the G with, with, with those two fingers. So how did you learn these chords if you weren't ever trained? I made them up. I made I made them up. I'm ter I mean, I just don't know. I can't, I don't know pentatonic scales. Somebody goes, can you play? I can't play it. And I don't fucking care. I'm old. And I just, I invent the, I don't play bar. I play bar chords like this. It's not right, but it sounds great. And it's just. It's great to have a rule book and it's great to know all that. And I wish that I did, but it's great to rip it up and just do your own thing. Because if it's right to you, then it's right. It's just right. If it sounds killer, it's killer. It doesn't matter. If, I've been in fights where guys go, well, you know, you're playing a nine, A minor seventh and it should be an A sus seven. I don't, what is that? I go, this sounds right. That doesn't sound right. So, you know, well, it's not, you know. I love that. <laughs> that makes me so happy. Because <laughs> again, I've just moved on. It's a guitar. It's 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 an exp it, it's an expression, you know, and you should express yourself any way you can with it. And because somebody says that isn't right, doesn't mean it's not. It doesn't mean that it, it's wrong. But it's, it, if it's right to you, it's right. I, I mean, I really believe that so much. And I tell you know, my daughter's learning guitar at the minute as well. And and. And I've been saying this to her, you know, she's going, is that right, Dad? I would, does it sound right to you? She goes, I, she goes, yeah. I said, well, then it's right. But my teacher says, I'm not, I said, no, it's right. Yeah. You know? That's so funny. And is so, that Pepper? Is that Pepper, your daughter? That's Pepper, yeah. She's yeah, that's on your right, new yeah. album, isn't she, which is out in February? She February. is. She is. And that's she's, cool. um, she's playing mandolin and violin, a little bit of keyboards, and he's starting to pick up the guitar now as well. And um it's just great to see but i mean it's it's simple i mean the lizzie stuff there's a bit more to it because those guys were some you know yeah. great guitar players i mean exactly. i mean the riff to, um, to jailbreak is just like <laughs> it's simple but it's you know it's just it's a lot of it's in the right hand too it's quite punchy you isn't know? it you've got to kind of really yeah so with it. yeah <laughs> You know, and it's a lot of it's. I'm a big believer in in developing your rhythm hand. I think that's really important. Most of the guitar players that I 
I love like Malcolm Young, like Steve Jones, uh, even Hetfield, you know, Jake Barnes are all great rhythm guitar players. Yeah. As well as, you know, they've got a great right hand. And um, to me, that's vitally important. I mean, I, I, mean, I batter, I batter the hell out of the guitar. These, I, these are 13 gauge strings that's on this guitar. Okay. So it's 13 to 56 yeah. because it's, you know, it's, you know, a, you got to play like your life depends depends upon it and you've got to make it hard you know i i read a great article with jack white and he's he puts his effects pedals where he can just he has to really reach for them mm. instead of putting them right where his foot is he has to stretch and somebody said why do you do that he says because i feel i have to work harder to get to them and to make them sound you know it's, it's i have to work to get okay. I, I love that you know so you know when it's easy it's when it's easy it's too easy you know so that sounds nuts to me because i feel like yeah. every time i hold this i'm having to work it's like yeah but it's a right hand even the almighty like free and easy it's all like the rhythm you know yeah that's the thing like you say if you're a great rhythm player it's, it's killer yeah yeah, yeah. i mean and, and i love i love playing rhythm guitar i can play a little bit of lead guitar i mean i you know i'm not great and i certainly wouldn't call myself a lead guitar player but i think i'm a pretty good rhythm guitar player um yeah. and i love playing rhythm guitar i think you get a great sounding rhythm guitar setup it's hard to beat you know it's it's, it's the meat and potatoes of, of a great sounding band yeah, I agree with you. It's, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So show me how to do the um, the Black Star Riders one then. So that's um, right. So you got G. G. Yeah. 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 And D. You, you're in standard tuning, right? Yes. Aha. All right. You see, we. Is this not in standard we, tuning? It, no, we 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 tune down a half step, so our our E would be like a D sharp and so on. So. But if I put a capo, we use, and I we use capos. I use capos a lot as well. I don't, yeah. I don't know if people. I use them a, a lot. So, um, so we should be right now. So I put a capo in the first fret. I'll now be in standard tuning with you. Okay, cool. So try try your G, right? Here we go D. Is it E or D? So D. G. G D. G E. D. G G D D. Sorry, D D, D as in. That's it. And so you're just going. It's almost country. The strumming. What is the strumming that you're doing? So. La, 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 la. It's like up and down. So. Just up and down the whole time. So. I'll try and slow it down. It's funny because I've never. I've never dissected the songs like this. So I don't even know what I'm doing myself. So it's like, um. or you can just go. Yeah, that's it. And just repeat it. So. Almost laid back, you know, almost to behind the beat, chill back, chill, you know. I'm definitely not on the beat, that's no worry there. <laughs> hey, this is better sometimes to be a little bit behind the beat than on it, believe me. True. Oh, what is it again? G, 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 D, D. Yeah. Yep. So you st I think you stay on those chords a little bit longer. So. Do you do you know how many times you stay on it? Like how many count? One, two, three, four. 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 So it's four on the G, four on the D, and then two, eight, two bars on the E minor. 
So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. There you go. Keep going. Back G. Go back to G. Brilliant. No, you get it. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Woo. Look at you. Woo. Okay. I mean, and, that, and that's, you know, it's probably our, our biggest, you know, well known song. You know, it was BBC Radio 2 single of the week, and it's, you know, there's maybe one other chord in it, but it's pretty. That's it, you know. And obviously, Scott and 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 um, and Damon Johnson at the time when that song came out were doing. You know, they were doing some great dual lead guitar parts on that, um, which I'll not even attempt to try and play. Um, but you know, it, that's that's the foundation of that song. Um, and you'll find, you know, I'm sure you'll find as you're talking to a lot of guys that that a lot of these songs when you strip them down are just simple, you know. Yeah. You know? No, I, I, I like that. I mean, you know, you listen to the virtuosos like, you know, Bonamassa or Vi and stuff yeah. like that. Which is amazing. Yeah, and it blows your mind. But then yeah. it's nice to know that it doesn't have to be that. You can just have yeah. a little strum and it... Yeah. yeah. You know, and you can do... And, and obviously when you, when you do that live, um, you know, you, you can... I'll switch to electric. You can get really get into it. And I mean, it's like, you know, the... You know, cheers, I'll turn this on, you know. You know, yeah. so it's great. I love you can it. add the chunk, add the chunkiness to it, and you know, really sort of rock it up. Um, but so yeah, you, I mean, I write. Sorry. Are you a bit of a gearhead? Like, do you love experimenting with gear and and you know different guitars and? No. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I just, I just, I know what I like, you know, I, I, I have a really simple setup. I use, I use JCM at hundred Marshall heads. I use, um, Marshall four by 12, two cabinets. I pretty much go straight in. Mm -hmm. I think if you have a good guitar and a good amp, you know, for what I play, I don't need to put anything in between it. I don't need hundreds of effects. I sometimes maybe have a little delay or maybe an, an overdrive pedal that, I mean, and that's it. And if you're getting, it's all in this. Yeah. I mean, a great example was when we first signed a record deal with Polydor the Almighty and we got all this money to go and buy gear. And we, we went out and I bought the white Les Paul because Steve Jones and, from Sex Pistols and Steve Clark from Def Leppard had a white Les Paul. We bought the Marshall Amps because that's what you had to buy. We end up in Studio Two and Abbey Road making our first record. You know, I, it's taken me 10 minutes to find the on switch in the Marshall. I, you know, it was one of those things where and then I plugged it in and went, well, why doesn't this sound like James? He why doesn't this sound like Hetfield? Why doesn't this sound like Steve Jones? You know, I've, I've got all the gear that they're using because it's in this. It's in how you play it. It's in how they play it. Yeah. You know, that you can never buy. You can fucking spend all money in the world, but you'll never replace the soul or the feeling of how somebody plays guitar because everybody plays guitar the way they play guitar. And that's what makes it unique. You know? I understand your feeling with that when you plug something in and you play it and you're like, why doesn't it sound like that? Yeah, why doesn't why? it sound, yeah. yeah, you know? Yeah. And, I'm, and, and it's, it's most of the time, it's how the, those guys play it as opposed to, you know, I mean, obviously, yes, the effects they use helps and all that kind of stuff. But a lot of it is definitely in how, in how you attack it and how you play it. That's the uniqueness of it. And that's what I love about the guitar is that, Yes, it's, you know, it's an immaterial object, but when a person's playing it, they're putting their, their DNA into it almost, you know? It's an extension of your personality. It is, very much so. I love very that. Very much so, you know? Um, I guess that goes with, like, really feeling it, doesn't it? Like, I'm so stiff whenever I play, but I think once you can let yourself go, then that's when it does become a, an extension of your personality. It just flows through you type thing. It is, you know, and for me, people like Townsend and, and Rick Nielsen from Cheap Trick and Steve Jones really played, really battered it and were windmill shakes and were just banging it off their amps and stuff like that. That was what I was like, I'd rather, 
I can watch that for hours. I mean, I can't, to me, somebody going, blah, 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 there's a place for that. And it's great. And those guys are amazing, talented, talented people. That doesn't make me excited. Watching Townsend doing it, doing windmill guitars or, you know, smashing his guitar up or rubbing it on the microphone stand. You know, guy, Jack, Jack White's great as well. I mentioned it before, but Jack White just gets these crazy, insane sounds out of his guitar. Yeah. yeah. That's when I get excited. That's you know. the punk rocker in you though, isn't it? Yeah, it is. That's the no rules. That's the, you know, yeah. not playing within certain rules because there shouldn't be any rules in music. There just shouldn't. It's it's art. There's no rules in art, you know? God, we've got rules and everything else. Don't, don't, don't have any rules in art, you know? Yeah, that's nice. That's yeah. a nice way to look at it. Yeah. And so the new album, When Life Was Hard and Fast, did you record that during lockdown? How did, what, what, nope. how did it come about? No, that album was recorded um, in April of last year, 2019. So right. way, but way before we even knew the the pandemic was coming down down the road, um, and it was recorded here in LA. It was recorded with a full band, um, you know, as as live as possible. Obviously, there's some overdubs we did afterwards, but you know, the the drums, the bass, guitar, rhythm guitars are pretty much from the the live take playing, um, and. It was great working with Keith Nelson. I, you know, I did, I, I co-produced it with Keith Nelson and I co-wrote a lot of the songs with Keith and Keith is well known for being the guitar player in Buck Cherry. And Keith has an insane collection of vintage guitars. I mean, he's got some guitars probably that he's got are worth over hundred grand. And to have that arsenal at your disposal was phenomenal. I mean, he's just got, you know, Les Pauls from you know the fifties. He's got, you know, Rick and Backers from the sixties and, they were just there. So we just had this amazing collection of guitar. When we were doing a song, you know, we just give me that Rickenbacker and it just sounded amazing. Or give me that, you know, 58 Les Paul. And I was in heaven. Could you play the Rickenbacker? I tried one of those on Monday. I was like, whoa. They're weird, you know, I, I love them. I've played them a few times and I, I really like the 12 strings. We actually used the Rickenbacker 12 string on a couple yeah, of songs. Yeah, that's what I tried. It was like, yeah, where yeah. my fingers come? No, yeah, it's tough because you're holding down, suddenly you're holding down two strings instead of one and there's not that much space between the strings, right? So yeah. you're, even, you're, even your open chords, your your fingers are very scrunched together. Mm. Um, it takes getting used to it, but I love the sound, you know? I'm a big fan of the birds and Roger McGinn obviously is famous for playing the 12 string Rick and Backer. So. And the Beatles as well, you know, they started playing on Yeah, the obviously, with, of course, you know, and then, and then Weller with the jam, you know, mm -hmm. obviously using one. So uh, when we're doing the guitars on the record, we're very much about texturing and layering different guitar sounds. So, okay. you, you know, changing different guitars, changing amps. It doesn't all have to be distorted the whole time. Sometimes, you know, you can layer with, get a really good clean sound and, and build on top of that. I just, they just experimenting. That's fun. Well, it's a great, I mean, it's a great album. You had some good names on Thank there you. as well. So you've got the new album with the original songs yeah. and then you've done a covers album as well, haven't you? With yeah. That? Yeah, I mean, that was a, that was really came, that was a pure accident, really. I mean, I, I did the last record. And I used the, the No Defunct Pledge campaign for that. That was back in 2015. And I would do updates every few weeks of these cover songs just sitting on my stairs playing, you know, cover versions for fun. And people really, really liked it, seemed to really, really dig it. And my manager at the time said, you, you should record an acoustic album of cover versions and we'll just give it away. You know, we'll not give it away, we'll, we'll do it through the pledge, yeah. limited edition. And I said, yeah, it's a great idea. So I went and did the album. I did it like two days or something. And... We, we did a limited edition run through the pledge campaign. And then when this record was finished, Nuclear Blast, my label said, you get any bonus tracks? And of course I'm scratching my head. And my manager again goes, yeah, you do. You got that whole, you know, covers version album that a lot of people haven't heard. Why don't we give that away as a bonus disc for the album? And I was like, sounds good. And uh, that's how that came about. But yeah, there's some, uh, there's some strange cover versions on that. Yeah, the Britney one. <laughs> you oh, know, yeah, I mean, why? I I started, why? I, well, I started playing that song for my my daughter was really young when I came out, and I used to play it for, her and she used to sing along, and I actually like that song. I think it's a great pop song, and I just thought, isn't it funny if this sort of Neanderthal tattooed Irish guy does this really sweet cheesy pop song? Yeah, it's a, it's a laugh, you know, and 
it's funny because I've done it. I've done it live, and I, you know, I'm, I remember playing it at Rock City a few years ago in Nottingham, and you know, three hundred, you know, hairy tattooed rockers singing along. To, Oops, I did it again. Is a memory I'll, I'll, you know, I'll take with me to my grave. It was brilliant. Was it a moment of like mosh pitting, and then all of a sudden the mosh stops? And well, like, no. I, oh, are we I hearing would, this correctly? I would, I would, no, I'll do it as a solo acoustic gig, so everybody's standing watching, and then you know I do it, and I just get them all to sing along in the chorus, and it's just you know, it's fun. like looking in the mirror, see, seeing all these, these these great these great rockers out there with tattoos and hair, and they're just singing this cheesy pop song. Um, it's just it was just a lovely moment. No, that's cool. It's good that you can have fun with it. How are you keeping yourself sane? I mean, what are you doing? And yeah, I mean, you know, once it happened and and it was the oh my god, what are we going to do? I, you know, I just I just accepted it and was like, well, I can't I can't do anything about this. It, it's bigger than all of us. So, you know, I started looking at doing the online stuff and and I explored a few different platforms. I found Stage It, which is the one that I use, which I which. I feel works really well for me and um I just like the whole setup that they have there yeah and I just started doing that I just started writing um you know even more than I already do just playing guitar just trying to keep myself as busy as I can you know and it's been okay you know we're I mean it's horrible with so many people hurting you know I mean I'm one of the lucky ones that there's, there's food in the fridge and I got a roof over my head I get to play guitar and write every day I'm more than blessed um, I really have nothing to complain about. It's, there's a lot of people out there that are that, that that are having a really tough time, and you know, I really, I just, I feel for them, you know. And, but I think music is important, and because I think we need it more than ever right now. Yeah, I I hear you, hear you totally with that because you know, without this, I would have don't know what. Yeah, I know. So no, you yeah. you appreciate music, and it's interesting because I I wonder what live music is going to look like when we come out the other side of this and I, I don't know. know part of me was you know you you look at the depressing side of it and then actually you get to the point where you go do you know what I, you have to see the silver lining to this and maybe yeah. maybe it's stopping and as may it will make everything kind of reboot again maybe we sort of go back to the 70s and, and how because maybe it was just too much there was shows sure. every five minutes and you could see your band at, whenever you wanted yeah. Then maybe we all appreciate it a bit more, and it's not so. I think what you I think what you say makes absolute sense. I think we were getting to a point where we were spoiled with everything in our lives, and I think it's almost like somebody's hit a reset button and gone. You know, I, we you know as a species, we're so far away from nature. That's a whole other story. We've lost touch with, I think, our animal instincts as yeah. human beings, and I think we need to get some of that primeval hunger back. That 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 that's all in all of us that we've forgotten we've we've got mm -hmm. and i think that this will end and this will pass because i'm sure people during the second world war which went on for six years far worse than this um you know with you know they thought well it's never going to end the world's never going to be safe. well guess what it is you know but it changed and the world the world will be different i'm i'm trying to be optimistic and think that it'll, it might be better i think people will want to come out and see live music more than ever because they'll have missed it um and i just hopefully we can be a bit more human than we already are you know we can start getting some humanity back we can start appreciating the things that we have i think we'll never take a lot of stuff for granted again um and that's a good thing yeah but i think i think i think we'll be okay i think it's going to take it's going to take a while but i think we'll be okay no i agree with you yeah yeah well ricky it's been amazing chatting to you thank oh you. thank you so much for having me you're, you're it's such a great thing you're doing it's really cool it's lovely to be part of it.